Hi. Uh, I'm sure you enjoyed the videos that the, the first video. The first video, if you remember, was on pre-reading questions relating to the poem Life by Charlotte Bronte. And uh, we looked at a lot of questions and uh, I hope you you made your points and uh, I'm sure uh, you're better prepared uh, for the poem than you were before. So welcome to this session. Uh, today we are going to look into the poem. We are going to read the poem. Uh, we are going to pause and try to understand the language used by the poet. We will try to understand how the poem relates to the present time. So for the next 30 minutes or so, I would request, request you to kindly uh, be focused and uh, please participate. Uh, I know it's a video and you can't participate that way, but I, I, I want you to note down uh, your thoughts and uh, I would also want you to um, pose a few questions the next time uh, we meet uh, for the online class or even otherwise. So that's uh, my message for you. Um, have a, have a, let, let, I, I hope you have a good time um, with the video and I hope that um, you will certainly enjoy this session. So let's, let's go ahead and do it. Thank you. Yeah, as you already know, Charlotte Bronte was a 19th century English writer. Uh, most famously known for the novel Jane Eyre, 1847, which is considered a classic of Western literature. So today, um, we are going to do the poem Life. I, in the earlier video, we had looked at uh, the pre-reading activity and uh, we tried to answer some of these questions which will form the basis for uh, the poem that we are going to do. So I've divided it that way. Uh, hopefully, you know, that was a good brainstorming uh, video and uh, I'm sure all of you had, uh, you know, had the best possible preparation for this particular class. So, we look at this poem written by Charlotte Bronte. The name of the poem is Life and um, uh, before we go into the poem, I'm going to, I would want you to just go to the glossary, you know, many times, you know, uh, this is one strategy that uh, we could employ. Uh, the strategy is before you go and read the poem, try to see if there are any words which, uh, uh, which are difficult for you to comprehend. You know, and many times when, when I say words, uh, uh, the glossary, I'm also looking at the two or three meanings that the word could uh, have. Uh, a particular word could a very common example uh, which I always give is uh, C-O-N-D-U-C-T which could be used in two ways. One is it could be used as a verb, it could be used as a noun. So in, in some such, way, such cases there could be a word which could be used in two different forms but there are words which have more than one meaning. So uh, without uh, uh, taking more time on that, I, I would like to go to the glossary. We have words like sage, oft which is again not a common usage nowadays uh, it's the word used for often and then uh, you have foretell gloom we have a word called as transient and i am trying to pronounce it the way uh, uh, it needs to be pronounced it's not transient it's transient okay and um, it's very easy to get the pronunciation of the words because you have the phonetic transcription also uh, just adjacent to the word. So transient uh, transient means temporary or momentary. Okay, you have words like bloom, lament, lament is to cry or weep, you have merry, sunny, you have a word called as flit. Flit here refers to one, it could be a fly or it to fly or to pass quickly or abruptly. Um, so that's uh, the two meanings there. And then you have sway, being controlled or influenced, unconquered, buoyant. Buoyant is a nice word. It means to be able to float or rise to the surface. Or one particular word that has been very commonly used for the past four to six months is being resilient. Even as we go through a very difficult time 
of COVID-19. Uh, the next word is manfully, courageously, quell is to stop, to suppress or to crush. And uh, the last word is despair, which means to lose hope. Right. So these are some of the words in the glossary, uh, which uh, basically should help you to understand the poem better. So what we've done, we'll quickly go back and see what we've done so far. Uh, as part of preparations for this poem Life by Charlotte Bronte. The first session we did was we looked at the pre-reading activity and there was a lot of discussion. Basically it was me talking about a lot of things but the idea was to make you think. The idea was to make you um, uh, prepare yourself for uh, this particular poem because it's, it's sometimes a little heavy poem. Uh, it's written way back in the 19th century. Uh, but then uh, there are a lot of truths in the poem uh, which I'm sure uh, you will identify, you will relate to even as we talk about events uh, happening in the year 2020. So the name of the poem is Life, uh, Charlotte Bronte and uh, the method that I'm going to use is I'm going to take three to four lines at a time, I'm not going to take the entire poem and then we'll stop and we'll, we'll discuss, we'll We'll try to understand it and try to relate it to the present day scenario and uh, that's uh, basically the plan uh, which I have uh, for teaching the poem Life by Charlotte Bronte. I'll read it once and then we'll take it a few lines at a time. Life, believe, is not a dream so dark as sages say oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom, but these are transient all. If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh why lament its fall? Rapidly, merrily, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. What though death at times steps in and calls our best away? What though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway? Yet hope again elastic springs, unconquered though she fell. Still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear us well. Manfully, fearlessly, the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously can courage quell despair. So this is basically what the poem is all about. It follows a nice rhyme scheme. Uh, if you see, you have say, day, uh, you have dream, you have uh, gloom, bloom, all, fall, merrily, cheerily. So you have a, a, a nice rhyme scheme, uh, you know, even as we read the poem, um, the poet follows a wonderful rhyme scheme it's a, it's it's a good read you know when you read it you feel uh, good about it so this is basically uh, the poem and uh, what i will do now for the next uh, few minutes is we are going to look at this particular poem and when i'm doing this poem i want all of you to go back and uh, uh, go back to that initial the first class that we did on you know the pre-reading activity we looked at a few questions and when when I when I when we do this poem I want all of you to keep your minds open and uh, uh, you know wherever possible um, you know I think you need to take a break stop and think about these lines written way back in the 19th century very relevant to the present times very relevant to um, the COVID-19 times if you may call it um, but then uh, let's start with the first few lines. The poet says, Life, believe, is not a dream So dark as sages say Oft, often, a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day. You know, um, the poet starts off uh, using the same word, the title, life, and there's punctu you know, punctuation becomes very important. Those pauses are very, very important. So life, comma, believe, comma, life is not a dream. Believe me, 
life is not a dream so dark as sages say you know the sages you know the the, the holy men the gurus or uh, the, the, the the sant mahatmas as we call them you know the the, the yogis of uh, india any other parts of the world all religions have these sages and these sages uh, sometimes say that you know um, life is dark so uh, i want you to sort of understand the poet doesn't start the poem on a negative note he says of course he says it's not a dream but it's not even dark as some sages say he goes on to talk in the next few lines he gives a very beautiful picture you know you it's also about uh, imagining you know the imagery of the poem becomes very very important he says often a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day how do you know it's going to be a good day how do you know that uh, uh, there are going to be good things happening in your life uh, very often it's about those indicators that you get at the beginning of the day that tells you how that particular day is going to be about in the same way you have some indications in your life which basically tell you how your life is going to pan out how the day is going to pan out how the next few months are going to pan out so the very beautiful introduction very powerful if you see so far he talks about the different possibilities that you have uh, uh, you know in life he talks about the importance of uh, understanding uh, those um, indicators become very very important for you to understand how uh, the day or the times are going to be the next four lines see it goes like this sometimes there these are clouds of gloom but these are transient all let's pause here he says sometimes these are clouds of gloom for some of you um, you know let's take two different parts of the world we talk about two different parts of the world let's say england uh, many times they get fed up of the rains you know and they you know they're the very very common phrase a very positive phrase there uh, they use phrases like sunny side of life they use uh, phrases like you know it's a bright star, bright sunny day so why do they do that you know if you go to a place uh, like the scandinavian countries uh, like norway or let's say you know even another country like iceland they, they hardly see the sun so for some of them clouds represent gloom it doesn't represent joy like you know for us you know for the peasants in india sometime in june they are eagerly waiting for the rains the first rains the clouds are a positive indicators but today uh, when we read the poem we should understand that sometimes these clouds for some people they are clouds of gloom but then immediately there is a shift you know the, the poet if you see uh, charlotte bronte in the first few lines you know she goes um, you know from positive to negative to positive to negative those shifts are very very visible uh, and the the choice of words are very very uh, apt so but these are transient all they're not going to remain they're going to be clouds of gloom they're going to be clouds of joy there are going to be times of sadness there are going to be times of joy uh, these are very very important lines in the present context because some of us um, Uh, have uh, sort of almost given in to social media uh, some of us regularly post whatever has been sent to us and many of this uh, many of the news much of the news that we receive uh, is uh, gloomy you know they talk about the latest thing that they are talking about is that the virus is in the air so they are almost stopping you from going out and uh, i heard it's come from who you know all these months they never spoke about it Uh, it was all about uh, distancing but when they talk about the virus being in the air then you know no one is spared so when we talk when we have when we live in these times we are bound to think about the negative you know i i feel sad for people who already are mentally ill because this could be a, a bad time if if you don't handle these people well so i'm coming back to the poem the poem says um uh, but these are transient all these times are transient if you remember the meaning of the word transient we looked at the glossary that's where the glossary comes to your rescue transient if you remember 
the word transient means that temporary it's not going to remain always so transient the word go back to your uh, glossary go back to those words they become very very each word becomes very important here and i want all of you to look into the meaning which was given there it's lasting for a short time it's impermanent transitory you know whenever you look at words don't look at one or two meanings look at uh, the gl the glossary the, the sorry the synonyms and the thesaurus sorry so temporary short lived ephemeral impermanent momentary fading unstable volatile these are the words the poet is using the poet says yes these are clouds of gloom for some yes absolutely they are clouds of gloom for some but they are not the same for everybody for some it could be uh, you know a very negative sort of a concept but then for some of them it could be something positive happening in their life so i want you to spend some some time with these two lines because uh, this is a very very important part of the poem by charlotte bronte so i'm going back to the poem he says so even as uh, we we've, we've completed about five lines of the poem and uh, by now if you had paid careful attention you would have understood that there is a certain rhythm to the poem you look at the way he, the poet uses those words so the rhythmic pattern i'm trying to help you to understand what this rhythmic pattern is so when you talk about rhythmic pattern a rhythmic pattern is anything that has some kind of a pulse that can be repeated so when you look at the lines in the poem you find a certain rhythmic pattern as well apart from that we should also understand that uh, because the poem was written at a particular period of time uh, there is a certain meter associated to the poem so what are, what are we talking about again we go back to the, ryth the rhythmic pattern basically meter is the basic rhythmic structure of a verse or lines in verse so this again uh, we are going and trying to understand to technical terms but i i just wanted to mention those here because you need to know that the poets of that particular time were very particular about using rhythm and meter apart from that if you look at the poem itself you will know that the poet has used lot of figures of speech so some of the figures of speech used in the poem life are uh, you have very very clearly examples of personification you have uh, simile being used and again you have uh, the use of metaphor as well so these are the basic uh, figures of speech used although you have a few more like pathetic fallacy and uh, others uh, which alliteration also uh, on occasions but then these are basically the figures of speech which we have used uh, in uh, which the poet has used in the poem so i'm going to continue uh, with the poem and uh, Uh, after you know that i think we we came to a point of time where the poet says that uh, whatever is happening is transient transient so i'll continue from there right it goes like this the poem goes like this after the sixth line where we ended last time if the shower will make the roses bloom or oh, why lament its fall rapidly merrily life's sunny hours flit by gratefully cheerily i'll just stop here if you look at the lines uh, which i've read if the shower will make the roses bloom right so we were talking about the clouds of gloom for some it is clouds of joy there is rain and the poet says the shower is responsible for the roses to bloom so why do you need to be sad when you know uh, why why do you need to lament when you know uh, when there is a fall of, of the flower you know why lament its fall we are talking about the roses okay and then he goes on to use 
uh, some adverbs there are a lot of adverbs used in the poem like rapidly merrily live sunny hours flit by they fly by they pass by and uh, gratefully cheerily are two words which you know you look at rapidly merrily we are talking about rapidly is to do with speed merrily to do with joy and then he uses the words very carefully gratefully and cheerily you know uh, be grateful uh, for the good things that happen in your life and the same time be happy enjoy them as they fly is talking about she's talking about the different phases of life you go through positive times you go through difficult times but uh, take it as a process and then enjoy uh, both the good and bad of life although it's easier said than done but that's basically what charlotte bronte is trying to tell us now it's a question that we need to put to ourselves ask ourselves uh, do we have this attitude which charlotte bronte uh, had you know when she's describing it in the poem obviously a little bit of the qualities of the poet also are revealed through the poet uh, through the poem so do we have gratefulness are we happy uh, and uh, you know uh, you know are we happy at times are we cheerful and then these are things that uh, we need to ask ourselves uh, from time to time you know are you happy only uh, when you know good things happen to you are not prepared for sadness that's basically a question that uh, you need to ask yourself right i am going to move to the next part of the poem Uh, we've come almost the fifth half of the poem and then i'm taking it from there what though death at times steps in and calls our best away what though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway now all of a sudden there's a shift you a few uh, lines uh, you know before a few lines which we read a little while ago they they the poet spoke about how we need to be grateful we need to be happy we need to take both the good and bad you know uh, you know these were things that he was speaking about but all of a sudden there's a shift in the poem is talking about a very difficult thing to talk about you know most of us are talking about death nowadays um, very frequently there is a lot of Uh, discussion happening happening on social media about the deaths due to covid-19 and all that uh, and the poet says what though death at times steps in and calls our best away you know some people have have lost their lives at a very early age very young age because of covid-19 some young doctors young health professionals and policemen have died some children have died because of covid-19 so it's not that the old people are dying you know if one of your close family members um, you know dies passes away uh, because of um, some reason uh, he talks what though death at time steps in and calls our best away what though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway a big you know somehow sorrow seems to be winning nowadays there's very little positive talk every other day you hear about how people come up with statements the medical uh, you know fraternity and then we talk about vaccines and all that there's a little bit of positive but mostly we are talking about death we're talking about the uncertainty of life we're talking about sickness we're talking about hospitals being full so the poet also way back 200 years ago realized that Uh, the this is also part of life when sorrow seems to win over hope you know when sorrow seems to uh, be having uh, you know sorrow seems to have control over what you know over life over our situations and very little hope exists you know as if you know sorrow has total control over um, hope you know hope is a very powerful word and when um, you hardly have hope because everywhere around you, you see depressing things you find uh, negative things happening you find death you find illness sickness uh, um, and maybe war how do you deal with that situation is a 
question that the poet is asking. There are two questions which are posed to the readers and they are very pertinent questions. I'd like to just stop here for a moment. We've done about 75% of the poem. Uh, if you remember, we, the poet starts off saying that life uh, is not a dream and you know it's not like what the poets, uh, the, uh, like the sages say or the holy men say. He talks about the good things of life. He, he, although he keeps talking about clouds of goo, gloom, he certainly talks about the good things of life. Like, you know, he talks about roses blooming. He talks about... Uh, Words like merrily and cheerily are certainly very positive words. He also talks about the power of being grateful. So these were some of the things that we discussed. And now he, he just moved uh, to a point where he's asking us two very, very pertinent questions. One was about death. The second one was about the reality of life, which is to do with sorrow. Uh, and then what does he do in the last few lines is something that you know, I'm, I'm sure some of you may be inquisitive of, even as you have your, maybe your, the poem in front of you. So there is a big shift, you know, it's like the, uh, like the tides of the ocean, you know, there is, there is a high tide and there's a low tide. You're talking about the ebbs and flows of the tide. In, the similar, in a similar way, that's why I, sp I, I just mentioned a little bit about rhythm and meter, because Charlotte Bronte has kept those things in mind when she... Uh, uh, you know, wrote the poem. Uh, we just went back from the beginning of the poem to uh, I think we we just came to a point where we were speaking about how the poet talks about sorrow seems seeming to have been a much better position than hope. And those lines were what though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway. Yet hope again, elastic springs, unconquered, though she fell, still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear as well. Now again, we come back to the power of vocabulary and uh, Charlotte Bronte uses a phrase called as elastic springs. And I think elastic here, the closest word uh, that I can think of is being tenacious, tenacity. Tenacity is a quality that people expect from us, you know, at your workplace and difficult situations, the ability to be tenacious. So over hope, a heavy sway, yet hope again, elastic, elastic springs, unconquered, though she fell, still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear as well. Again, we talk about life and the poet talks about how the ability of life to uh, take our problems and our situations under her control. So that's basically these four lines talk about the tenacious nature of life. So that's why she talks about unconquered though she fell, still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear as well, so don't worry if uh, things go really wrong, uh, don't uh, be depressed. Uh, there is going to be a time when uh, this uh, bad time is going to pass away. And the last four lines again are very powerful. Uh, the poet uses easily, I think, four uh, words uh, and she's, you know, she's used all these L-Y words uh, through, through the poem and uh, I think in the last stanza also she continues to do that. So manfully, fearlessly, the day of trial bear. I think, you know, there are enough, um, enough opportunities for you to go to YouTube and watch many of those motivational videos. I've, I've seen a lot of them. There are a lot of them on Facebook and uh, other social platforms, social media. You know, I think what these videos do, what, what these motivational books and videos do is they lift your spirits. So I think uh, we need to do more of that and do not be bogged down by what we hear and read in day-to-day -day life. So uh, manfully, fearlessly, these are two powerful words I think which you need to keep in your mind. The day of trial bear. So be like a man. Again, when we say man, this has got nothing to do with gender. The ability to be fearless, the ability to be strong in the midst of turmoil. 
manfully, fearlessly the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously can courage quell despair. The last two lines, I think, sort of sum up what Charlotte Bronte has been trying to say through the poem. Although there are going to be difficult times, although there are going to be times when sorrow seems to be having total control over your life, you see death maybe all around, uh, maybe closed ones, uh, you know, um, you know, dying in your, uh, you know, in your family or friends. In, in, in the midst of all that, do you continue to be bold? Do you continue to be courageous? Obviously, that's the only way. And the two words here she uses is for gloriously and victoriously. These are words which talk about the future. These are words which are uh, optimistic. So for gloriously, victoriously can courage quell despair. The only way you're going to uh, overcome disappointment, dejection, and a much stronger word would be depression is only when you choose to be courageous because only with courage you will be able to conquer despair. So that's basically the poem by Charlotte Bronte and I would want you to go through the poem and make sh short notes because one good thing about poetry is that you, you could have your own uh, interpretations of the poem, do a lot of reading and uh, it's very interesting when you get deeper and look at the figures of speech and you could also look at um, the various devices used by the poet uh, and then you know it becomes very interesting and I would challenge and encourage all of you don't read it just for the sake of the examination point of view there's so much more that you can gain uh, by reading uh, poems like Life by Charlotte Bronte so um, we'll just uh, continue doing that and uh, do that reading and I basically have a few more things for you to do uh, which I'll be letting you know. I'm sure you enjoyed the video. Uh, basically I was just trying to help you to understand a poem which was written way back in the uh, 200 years ago or so but I was trying my best through the audio if you had seen to connect with the present times, connect with uh, what you and me go through in our day-to-day -day lives so that that makes poetry beautiful so as i said earlier uh, when i was when you were watching the video do spend some time reflecting on the thoughts of the poet looking at the vocabulary used if you are into writing poetry you should see the rhyme scheme and how rhythm and meter and other figures of speech were used so basically that's my message for you today um, Let's not stop here. Let's not just prepare. Um, let's not just prepare for the uh, examination point of view. But I think we should uh, go beyond that and enjoy poetry as it is. I encourage all of you, if you are into writing poetry, do write poetry. Do read a lot of poems because poetry is one way in which you know um, you can soothe your mind. You know, we're going through difficult times, and I, and one way of uh, really relaxing is you could uh, read poetry, write poetry, and. Um, literature basically helps you to uh, calm down, relax, um, a lot of benefits attached to reading anyway. So hopefully it was useful and um, looking forward to um, preparing uh, my next video. My next video will be on the prose lesson. So let's catch up then. Thank you.